Relationship red flags can only be seen in hindsight. So you know how we all talk about, God, why didn't I see the red flags? Why didn't I see that this behavior led to this, to that? You can't. It's really too hard to see while you're in the throes of trying to figure out who somebody is. Maybe you're physically attracted, but you have this gut feeling that something is wrong, but maybe you think you're scared, you misinterpret, you don't read yourself properly, and you don't read the other person properly. Well, first of all, we're not trained to read people properly. We're really not, so we have to rely on our gut feeling, our gut instinct to get us through unsettling observations, questionable observations. Just why do I feel weird? What's the matter? Something seems to be wrong. It's just me. I'm just nervous. And especially if you've already committed to getting married. So once you make that commitment to get married, you really can't read anything properly because now you're in this whole other headspace where you're on a time frame, you're spending a lot of money, you have a lot of people weighing in on what you should do for your wedding. This is the first time that you've made big decisions with your soon-to-be spouse and marriage is a huge commitment. Do you wanna start a family? Do you wanna to work together? There are all these things. But red flags can only be seen truly, or really understood. Red flags are seen, but they're not understood until after the fact. And so the reason why I'm on this right now is because I've done, last week I did a video on uh, don't judge a book by its cover. Don't be judgmental about people who really have to find out who they are. Yesterday I added on but when people tell you who they are, believe them. People will tell you who they are. People will say what they will do if such and such happens. This is what I would do. This is how I think. No, 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 believe them. You can't change them. No, no, people change on their own. But do believe what, how people tell you, uh, how people describe who they are. Now, my next step is, well, how do you know who people are? It's those red flags. Those red flags tell you who they are. We just don't know how to interpret them. So what got me onto this particular topic today was Bethany Frankel. Most of you know who Bethany Frankel is, even if you haven't watched The Real Housewives of New York. And preceding that, by the way, she did both apprentice shows. Martha Stewart and Donald Trump, and she learned how to do TV. Then she lands on The Real Housewives of New York City, does much better on that show, premieres the skinny girl Margarita, and then, you know, inks the Seagram's deal, becomes hugely wealthy and builds on that wealth. While she was with the New York City Housewives, she married Jason Hoppe. And I knew the episode. I was watching one particular episode and I knew exactly that she was gonna get divorced. Something she had said to him, and this is what she said, I got mine, now you have to get yours. Meaning, I just made a shitload of money, now you have to. Well, no, you don't have to. Nobody has to make that much money, although I would love to. I don't, true confession, I don't make Beth any money. I would love to make Bethany money, but she worked her tail off to get there. Literally worked her tail off. And the sad news is, it's very difficult for women to make more money than men. Very difficult for them to accept men that don't make as much money. Very difficult for men to feel fulfilled if they don't make as much money as women. It's changing. But I mean, I work in the field of divorce, so I, I can see things that are happening in real time. So Bethany's now doing a series of YouTube videos called Just Be Divorce. So her podcast is Just Be, Be for Bethany. And I guess she inked an exclusive with YouTube. Uh, so these are, it's a great series of videos and I really 
really suggest you all look at them. Just be divorced. Okay, so this is what I uh, listened to her say, the red flags, and she didn't really uh, address them properly. Well, there's a book for you, to, other than watching Bethany's video, there's a book I really think you should read called Dating Radar. It's by Bill Eddy and Megan Hunter. I love these people. I've known Bill Eddy for years. He's an attorney, a media, family law attorney, a mediator, and a social worker. He's written like 30 plus books on high conflict divorces. And Megan has worked with him at the High Conflict Institute that he started in San Diego many, many years ago. So Bill talks about divorcing people with high conflict personalities. And it appears that most of us now a lot of us have high conflict personalities or we the, the, people with high conflict personalities are everywhere and therefore we must be careful but this book is excellent because hang in there hang in there okay so here's the table of contents what jams your radar who is a high conflict person are there blind spots? What are the blind spots? Don't kiss a narcissist. Don't be blindsided by a borderline. Don't be seduced by a sociopath. Don't hit, hook up with a histrionic. Other high conflict issues to watch out for and fine tuning your dating radar. But honestly, don't beat yourself up. That's my message. On top of Bethany Frankel, Bill Eddy and Megan Hunter, don't beat yourself up. If you have married somebody that is high conflict, you missed the signals or you didn't address the red flags, don't beat yourself up. Everybody does it. Get out though. Do not fool around. Get out of that relationship unless that person is willing to work on their issues. Hey, if they're willing to work on their issues, give them another chance. Absolutely. But if they can't even have a conversation about their issues, get out. Leave whatever you can leave behind. So not worth rolling up your sleeves, getting in the trenches, going crazy. Just get out. Red flags can only be seen after the, in the aftermath. That's my point for today. And don't beat yourself up.